What's going on guys, Shoundji here, and uh, let's talk about Black Ops 6 and Call of Duty Next. Now, um, the format of COD Next is like a little annoying, but whatever, that's besides the point. Um, We got some stuff to talk about, whether it's zombies, multiplayer, or Warzone. Everything will be timestamped for you guys, and there were a lot of details for the most part. Some of that stuff we already knew about from leaks and other stuff, but we're going to break it down to the stuff I consider important information because there is a lot of like, oh, medals are coming back on the top of the gameplay. I don't really see that as a game changing feature it's just kind of a nostalgia sound asmr thing but that's besides the point that's just a you know a little bit of an example of what i'm talking about so before we go anywhere just want to mention if you guys enjoy the content please consider hitting that subscribe button and bell to be notified when i do drop more content the beta is right around the corner we have gameplay stuff planned we have all these other stuff planned there's a lot going on you don't want to miss it so hit that subscribe button and bell to be notified for when i do drop that content with that being said let's jump in and talk about the black ops 6 multiplayer section of cod next so for one the beta goes live this weekend and it is specifically the early access beta uh this starts august 30th and september 4th uh you can pretty much get access to this beta with a beta code from uh someone on twitter or xfinity rewards if you guys have pre-ordered the game or pre-purchased the game you will have access to this via your platform store and or just the call to the hq in general and if you guys have game pass i believe it's game pass ultimate you guys can also access the early access beta now if you guys don't have any of that and don't want to spend money and just want to wait to check out the game for yourself. The open beta will be September 6th through 9th, and this is available on all platforms. Important to mention, didn't mention early access, all platforms. There's no platform exclusivity like we've seen in the past with PlayStation. That's gone, thank God. And uh, in general, yeah, I am um, really looking forward to checking out the beta. There is a lot of great stuff here. Now, when it comes to the actual game itself, uh, really important to mention, we're getting 16 launch maps, and these are all new maps. I think 12 of them are 6v6. The other four are going to be strike based maps uh strike based maps are just not the traditional 6v6 i don't think any score streaks are available they're tighter they're smaller i think it's fine i'm really excited to check it out especially in the beta uh the black ops 6 beta is going to have eight of these maps which is nice we're going to get to check out half of the maps that are coming in at launch i think this is really really good now this wouldn't be a Call of Duty game without prestiges or at least the classic prestige system. And thankfully, we are getting that feature back in some capacity. So there is, you know, the fact that this is a classic prestige system. It's going to operate like we have seen in previous Black Ops games, not Cold War, for example. And I'm really looking forward to this. So pretty much it is going to be a relock everything type of system. Uh, good news, you won't lose your weapon progress when you prestige, so there won't be a complete punishment. But let's say you do want that weapon of choice that you love and you want them to use, we'll say it's the XM4, for example, you do get one perma unlocked each prestige like you traditionally seen in past Call of Duties. There are going to be 10 prestiges and there will be a prestige master with tons of levels after that. Each prestige has their own exclusive awards and things like that. Everything to expect in a prestige system. Uh, we're kind of doing away with that uh, I don't know what we want to choose seasonal rank thing that we've seen from Call of Duty since Mod for 2019, but that is what it is, or at least like, yeah, whatever that was. Now, in general, the main feature of this COD is going to be Omni Movement. Uh, it's going to pretty much be a feature that is inherent to the game. And this isn't one of those like, oh, this is look at this cute little mounting feature you can do in multiplayer. No, this is changing fundamentally how players move and shoot and shoot while moving. There's a lot here that is incredible. And it's nice to see people that play the game a lot use Omni Movement because I was neutral on this feature for a while. It could have been great. It could have been awful. Who knows? But I am really loving what I'm seeing and it looks really, really good. So the main thing here is that there is a good balance from what I'm seeing. Again, I haven't played it yet between speed, control and usefulness of this feature. It's really playing great with the gunplay and the maps being designed are really kind of keeping it in mind. Now, back onto maps a little bit, kind of skipped over it. Uh, we're going to expect the three lane structure of Treyarch here. Usually that's a system I don't really like. However, based on Omni movement, what they talked about, it is a little bit of a different approach in terms of like, we're going to keep the condensed three lane structure, but we're going to give a little more avenue and leeway which i do think is nice sits in a little bit more of that black ops one quote unquote style rather than something we've seen in black ops four where like three lanes were like really three lanes so very nice to see omni movement and the maps really flow really damn good there um weapons uh yeah this is really important this is something that we haven't really seen in the multiplayer revealed how's gunplay with omni movement really good um they said they stated that they wanted weapon gunplay to feel really tight and mostly it looks 
really tight, which is really good. Omni movement and gunplay are flowing in in a great way. And again, I'm excited to check it out. This is just me watching, not playing, but from what I'm hearing and from what I'm seeing, yeah, this the, it's tight. It's good. It's what you expected from Treyarch with new Omni movement features, which is really nice. Now, they also stated that they're going to be having 12 all new weapons never before seen in Call of Duty. And on top of that, we're, of course, we're going to get our fan favorites returning, like the Krig has been stated. The XM4 has been stated. Those weapons are coming back. But yeah, it is cool seeing new weapon to the arsenal. We we're getting to a point in Call of Duty where there were a lot of reprisals coming back in some way or capacity. And again, that, that's fine. But again, we want new stuff. Uh, they even talked about some prototype weapons being thrown in there. Attachments, Gunsmith. This is something that was really, really positive. Wasn't really expecting this at all. Um, the goal here with attachments and the Gunsmith is to give power to play styles. Now, in past, uh, there were tons of cons. There were like trade-offs. If you wanted more ADS time, you sacrifice recoil and recoil control. And they're pretty hefty. It seems that they're pretty much stating that there's going to be less cons to these attachments so it's really going to be empowering different play styles with different weapons rather than like the great the perfect niche balance of attachments to that weapon to get the most optimal time to kill they're trying to simplify it and trying to make it better which i do think that approach is going to be really good and i believe it it looks like they really are simplifying the gunsmith which can be pretty convoluted but at the same time enhancing what it should be of enhancing different play styles so that's really good to see uh, time to kill this section actually I, I don't know how people feel um i prefer a faster time to kill than a slower time to kill but i am always swayed in different ways depending on the game i am playing and here we are going to be getting a slightly lower time to kill value compared to black ops cold war so if you guys are looking for something alongside black ops cold war the time to kill here is going to be slightly faster than that which could run people the you know wrong way another thing they mentioned is player health and this is going to get Hopefully I can simplify as best as possible. The player health value is going to be at a hundred health points. In Modern Warfare 3, this was at 150. Modern Warfare 2 2022 was at 100 and Black Ops Cold War was at 150. Now, this doesn't mean that we're going to have an insta hit scan style time to kill number. But what this means is that there are, I guess you could say, a wider range of numbers they can tweak and work with to really balance guns out. Technically, the more HP you have as a value, the easier it is to tweak and tune. So it is interesting to see Treyarch go back to 100 HP. They describe the time to kill being closer in line, or at least somewhat similar to Black Ops Cold War, just not as slow. So again, Balancing wise, 100 HP could be concerning, especially since we're coming off 150 HP for Modern Warfare 3. And I thought that was actually a really sweet spot when it came to time to kill and how things fell and the number values and things like that. So we'll see how things go there. And then I guess you could say the final note is that uh, optics have customization. Uh, so reticles you can customize. And I think that's something that's been long overdue and uh, really excited to see that come back. But that pretty much wraps up our multiplayer section. Now on to some zombie stuff. This will be much shorter than the multiplayer section. Now this will be entirely spoiler free with no story beats being included at all. Just know that this is continuing the dark ether storyline. So for one, we're getting the return of round base maps. And at launch, we have two maps, Liberty Falls, which is being showcased today, and Terminus Island, which was showcased at the Zombies reveal. Omni movement is going to be present in Zombies, and crafting and killstreaks are back. Another great thing is that you can go third person, uh, similar like Modern Warfare Zombies we saw last year with Modern Warfare 3, and honestly, it brings a brand new dynamic Omni movement, and this third person really is like cool, and I was shocked on how much it was just awesome. It like really was a game changer, and it does look like Omni movement is affecting all criteria and all modes of Call of Duty in itself. We'll get into some of that stuff with Warzone later. Um, there is going to be an onboarding process with zombies. Uh, this was actually shocking. And this mode is called a directed mode. You can do the main quest with a cap on the total rounds you can reach. And this cap will be round 15. Side quests and other Easter eggs will be disabled during this mode. I think this is great. Onboarding, I guess you could say, as they described it, could be intimidating for some players. So um, yeah, that's that's pretty cool. Now, now, one thing I was shocked about was there is a build crafting element to zombies. I did not expect this as someone who plays Destiny 2 a lot, as you guys can probably check on the channel. Uh, this is 
awesome. And the build elements or build crafting elements will be tied to augments you unlock when playing zombies. There's over 100 of them at launch. So there is some seriously serious, exciting stuff. Uh, the showcase talked about some new perks and things like that, but nothing too crazy to go over. Kind of want to keep it spoiler free as possible, I guess you could say. But the biggest shocking news was that there is going to be another round based map coming by the end of the year. And that means by the end of 2024. So some point when season one launches, I expect us to have a brand new map, which is kind of absurd and good quality content for zombies in itself. But yeah, that's pretty much the zombies update. Not too much there. The big juice was multiplayer and Warzone, but nonetheless, some good stuff to be excited about when it comes to zombies and Treyarch things. Now with the final part of this video, this is a long one. Lots to go over. Um, like expected when it comes to Warzone, we are going to see the integration in season one and uh, there's a lot coming. So for one, we're getting a brand new resurgence map area 99. Now they describe this as the birthplace of Nuketown and it's basically inspired by Nuketown, which is, I think is pretty cool. It's like the manufacturing hub of how they built all these different Nuketowns and you'll see very familiar, I guess you could say houses and level stuff. It's pretty cool. Uh, they described it as fast and frenetic gameplay and similar in size to Rebirth Island. Now, player count, I didn't really see. I couldn't really see. I'm going to ideally guess it's going to be in line with what we get in Rebirth Island. If the sizes are similar, uh, some very massive quality of life changes or just in changes to the systems itself. Uh, backpacks, uh, they're gone. It's going to be a return to the Warzone 1 system, but obviously there's going to be some tweaks to it. Now, one of those tweaks is going to be ammo satchels and armor satchels. So these are ways to expand the capacity of either armor or ammo. And another thing that's pretty crazy is that these are stackable. So it's kind of ideally like a in-game constant. You find more of these, you progress it forward, you get like a lot of armor and things like that. I don't know if there's going to be a cap specifically on how much you can hold. I probably would assume there is going to be a cap, but it is pretty cool to see ammo and armor satchels return or somewhat come back in the fold in a new way. So hopefully that is pretty damn good. Uh, Obby movement of course, is going to be present in Warzone. It looks really good. Let's see how it plays out in like Urkistan, Vondel, all these other maps that really didn't have Omni movement in mind. But again, it looks really good and really excited to check it out in Warzone. Uh, wild cards are coming to Warzone. A uh, little intrigued by this. Uh, there is a lot of changes to the loadout structure. So two examples that they showed was overkill being a wild card. So that means you can have two primary weapons in your loadouts. Uh, no longer an intrinsic perk that we saw in Modern Warfare 3's Warzone. And then Gunfighter. You can have a primary weapon with eight attachments. So uh, that should be interesting. Honestly, uh, let's see how things go. And they described this as a disruptive system that they wanted to have in the Warzone loadout. So yeah, all together, let's see how that plays out. Uh, the perk system is going to return to three perks. Perks instead of the four perks selection. Uh, we have brand new perks coming and not really going to showcase what those are, but again, they're going to retool all the perks like we saw when it came to the Modern Warfare 3 integration after Modern Warfare 2's Warzone 2.0. Uh, classic Prestige is coming to Warzone. Well, pretty intrigued to see how that works out. And then Honestly, my favorite feature that they described really wasn't expecting it was a dedicated melee. And if you guys want to know exactly how this is going to work, think about it like Apex. Uh, you pull this out, you run faster and you have infinite tax sprint. So it's going to be a great way of utilizing, I guess you say, point to point movement and just getting in and out pretty fast. If you're getting shot at from a long range from a sniper, this should definitely help you with Omni movement. Evade those snipers. So that is pretty damn cool. Uh, loot drops when it comes to loot on the ground. After you kill somebody, it's going to spread out like it did in Warzone 1. And I think the biggest news that everyone's going to be pretty damn excited about is that Verdansk is returning to celebrate the five years of Warzone in spring 2025. But altogether, that is pretty much everything we talked about. Everything here is pretty damn exciting, whether it's the Warzone stuff, the zombie stuff, and the multiplayer stuff. Definitely, you know, had the most time on multiplayer because, again, that is the newest and kind of the thing I'm looking forward to the most here. And I was not saying I'm not looking forward to Warzone, but again, it's... The most juiciest stuff we got and excited to see where warzone goes it definitely looks like we are going to be in an awesome fresh spot to start off warzone with this year of integration with black ops 6. let's see how things play out um curious to hear your guys thoughts on the information and what you saw at cod next all together this should hopefully be an exciting year of call of duty but if you guys enjoy the information enjoy the video be sure to drop this video like helps out the video a ton and for more content from me we have tons of stuff when it comes to call of duty on the way we got the beta pretty soon and obviously more stuff along leading up to the launch definitely hit that subscribe button and bell to notify for when i do drop that content but uh yeah hope you guys have a good one shout out to you here and i'm out